develop a safety committee and establish four meeting times per year. Now for some, that will feel like a huge stretch. And so if that's you, that's a great place to start. If you're saying as you read that, wait a second, we already have a safety committee and we already do meet four times a year, then our reach goal or our pro tip would be to integrate uh, families and students into that committee. Not necessarily for every item, right? You don't necessarily need student perspective on some of the issues that you may address, but you do want to ensure that we've got a collective group of folks that are truly representative of our entire community who can participate in some of the strategic contemplation and in some cases even decisions. Michael Robinson, who is currently an interim head, has been a head, has been in independent schools for his entire career, um, and also who happens to be on our advisory board. So one of the voices that we um, listen to most closely as we roll out new programs and new, new try to solve new challenges with and or for our schools. The value of the safety committee is that there's a group of people representative of the communities. There are teachers, there are administrators who have gathered for the purpose of thinking about, planning on, reflecting on how the school is doing with safety, with its plans, and factoring in how do people feel, what do people observe, what do people feel the needs are. And so for me, it's a, it's a, it's a way that uh, the community is engaged with the all important work of keeping us safe because great schools are safe schools. But what we've learned is that people who feel safer are safer because they're more likely to take initial action. They're more likely to bypass denial. They're more likely to lead those around them. And so if we can make people feel safer, we are actually in fact also making them safer. Creating the tolerance to have that list of things we're working on. Because when in that first year, that long list can in and of itself create some fear because I think that it, it can beg the question or it can produce a question, gosh, are we unsafe or are we competent to handle a situation that may be unsafe or handle a situation that may be an emergency? And yet the more we take it seriously and don't live in a context of denial that people start to say, okay, we're, we're trying to be mature about this. We're trying to be professional and intentional about this. And, and then suddenly it's like, yeah, we actually are competent. I see us solving things. I see us trying things. I see us getting better at things. The more transparent and honest we are and then demonstrate that we're gonna, we're gonna deal with this. We're gonna work on it. We're gonna develop systems. We're gonna try things. We're gonna be iterative and some things will work and some things won't work. And we're gonna keep you know, gathering information. Um, the more safe we feel, the denial may be the most unsafe feeling environment.